What's going on guys? I wanted to make a video that talked a little bit about the spiritual awakening symptoms in a physical sense. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of spiritual awakening symptoms and they can range from your emotional upheaval, um, really crazy life circumstance situations kind of exploding into your life, massive changes. Um, but oftentimes this inner cleansing and purging period is associated with uh, physical ailments that are maybe sometimes surprising to you. And I just thought I'd share what I'm experiencing now, and, and it is in fact kind of very rare and odd for me to be going through this, but I do have a new perspective on it. And as a result, I dealt with this problem in a much different way. I actually kind of uh, let go and gave in to what was I'm experiencing and used some pragmatic tools to kind of help ease these physical spiritual awakening symptoms, which I'm gonna share with you as well. So I've never had back pain before in my life. I've always been very healthy, very active. And I've always kind of felt for people with back pain. So I know some friends and my brother-in-law has a really bad back and some of my, my former clients. Um, and it's pretty rough, man. It's like a very severe, a lot of nerves in your back and it can be pretty painful. And out of the blue, I'm experiencing like this fucking nerve pain big time, like in my lower back. In fact, standing here is kind of bugging me. Um, I literally had to just lay down on like a flat surface because even sitting down at my computer is like irritating it. And this is kind of, this is very rare for me again. And, and it's, it's kind of scary, you know, to consider oh, back problems. You know, what if I just start having this all the time? You know, some people live with that. Um, so there's a the temptation for me to kind of dip into fear. And this is also combined with massive emotional upheaval. We're approaching a full moon. Full moons tend to uh, magnify these spiritual awakening effects and it can oftentimes be on a very noticeably in a physical way. So I'm noticing a lot of other people are going through this now. It's 2016 and the end of January. And we've got a big ass Leo new moon coming up in just a couple days. And it's been, you can feel it building. Um, but anyway, so I found myself really just whirl, swirly in the head earlier and um, in this physical pain, but my attitude towards it just sucked. I was so like, what the fuck, this is bullshit, now I'm gonna have back pain, you know, poor me, victim, poor little Victor type of bullshit, you know, and that doesn't ever bring about anything positive. So yeah, I said, you know what? I chose to take approaches that I've learned to kind of help with this. So what I did, there's, there's three things I'm gonna tell you guys that I helped to not only shift my perspective and mood into, as you can see, I'm in a much better state than I was prior, and also my back is actually feeling a lot better. So the first thing I did was fast. I, I like to use fasting as a tool in my daily life. I actually perform intermittent fasting, which is where I, I don't eat breakfast and I kind of fast all throughout the day. And there's so many awesome benefits. It makes me feel so good to fast, dude. Not everyone really likes it as, as enthusiastically as I do, but it's so good for you. But I, anyway, I chose to extend my fast because once you get into the fasted state, you know, after like 16, 18 hours, there's a lot of different changes that go on in your body. It's quite interesting. So one of the noticeable side effects is you just get a surge of energy where you feel really good. You just feel like, and I, I believe that's due to your body having kind of detoxified itself, your organs and everything get to kind of rest and relax. And then without having all this food and activity going on in your body, your spiritual energy just gets to kind of flow more freely. And when you kind of allow that to happen, you can experience healing in it of itself. Um, so I fasted and then I broke my fast. Just a big bowl of awesome fruit. I used to live in South Florida, right near the beach. And they had the fucking, they had awesome ass fruit all, you see it's in my back, um, all year round. And we used to make, these my wife and I make these massive fruit bowls. We cut up like six, seven different kinds of fruit, and we'd like it was just a gorgeous thing. And because there's so many, such a variety of nutrients and vitamins that you just get from this bowl, it just so ah it feels so good. So that's what I would recommend. That's one of the things, man. Fast as long as you're comfortable with, and then break your fast with a nice big bowl of fruit, and you will love life. I promise you. It doesn't matter what's going on. Um, I chose to smoke a little bit of weed. I'm, I used to be a huge pothead, and in the last several months, I've noticed I haven't really been smoking that much. I'm, I'm really starting to kind of see that for me anyway, where I'm at, at in my life, smoking regularly doesn't allow me to be the best I can be, and I'm, I'm really trying to be creative and write and create things. Um, and it certainly, it, it can stimulate creative thought at times, but on like a daily basis, it tends to like, become just kind of a habit. But anyway, doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Doesn't mean smoking weeds were bad. It's gotta be all or nothing. So I had some, because I used, used to be a big grower. I used to, uh, that was one of, that's kind of how I got my non-job, how I, I broke out of the whole like, 
chain gang of fucking the nine to five gigs at jobs you fucking hate and you're stuck at because you don't get paid shit. I said, fuck that. So I taught myself how to grow. I'm in a medical state, so it was all totally legal. Um, but I mean, it, it, it definitely helped me like, give me freedom, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so as a result, I have some. And I, I, I don't smoke very often. I smoke with a real nice indica strain. Indica, there's two different types of cannabis. One of them is a sativa, one of them is an indica, and there's like variation within, you know, uh, on, within the whole spectrum. And the indica type is really good for soothing your body. It's not so much in your head. It allows your body just to kind of like bzzz. It feels really good. So that helped a lot, man. One little bonus thing, I don't know what it was exactly, but my, my wife, can, she's all into the essential oils and she concocted like this essential oil thing and put it all, all over my back and that helped quite a bit. And the third thing is I did something called a contrast shower. A contrast shower is basically where you just stand in the shower and you alternate the heat, the temperature from hot to cold and as like, as, in as drastic of a contrast as you can handle. So that's what I do. I get it as hot as I can fucking handle and you get all like, spend like a minute or so getting nice and hot and your skin feels warm and then you turn to cold as a balls and I'm here in Michigan in January, it's fucking cold. It's, it's, the pi it's in the pipes outside, it's fucking frigid. It's probably like 32.1 degrees. And it's like, oh, fuck, you know, but it feels so good. Your body is just like, whoo, and then you put the hot water on. And it's so soothing. But anyway, it causes your, like, blood flow to kind of expand and constrict, expand and constrict. So it kind of flushes your system with oxygenated blood, and it really helps on a practical level with ha giving you a lot more, uh, um, it, just, it kind of takes away aches and pains. It's good for reducing inflammation, that sort of thing. So having done all of those things, man, I feel a lot better. Um, and more importantly, and more, yeah, more importantly is it, it kind of zapped me out of my negative mood I was in. Um, and I, was, I reminded myself that these cleansing periods, these times where you're going through emotional, uh, uh, like physical symptoms, those are just the physical component to the degree of the emotional release you're going through. And that's a good thing. We have to let go of all this emotional baggage if we are to become the best versions of ourselves. Because with it, we are cons our, our, our path, all our decisions are like made and stem from this fucked up ego accumulation of emotional residue, mostly from our parents and past lives and shit like that. And it keeps like perpetuating cycles that we aren't really wanting to experience anymore, right? Because it's, we, it leads to behaviors that are not in alignment with our true where we want to go. So uh, as you release this shit, it's fuck, it's good. Let it happen. Um, and if you don't even know what the hell I'm talking about, then there's a reason you're probably listening to this. So just consider what I'm saying. Sometimes we go through, uh, you know, uh, a cathartic experience as a human being. It's an evolutionary path towards like enlightenment, and, and all it really means is lightening up, letting go of all this human karmic baggage that we've acquired. And it's a messy process and it's a very physical process. So when you allow yourself, when you, that's, I wanted to share these tips. That's basically what this whole video is about. Try these tips next time, man. When you're, when you're really going through shit, don't get mad. It's going to happen again and again for a while. It's just part of the process. Just chill out about it. Don't, nothing's really seriously wrong. Normally. <laughs> it can be. So just use your intuition. Um, and try those tools, man, because it really helped me. I know it can help you because I've experienced a lot of different symptoms that I know this shit I just described would have helped a lot as well, okay? So don't worry about these spiritual awakening symptoms, guys. They are for a higher purpose. There's always a reason for it. There's always a benefit to it. Even if you don't see it in the moment, don't worry about it, okay? Just hang in there. God bless you. I'll talk to you next time, and enjoy this upcoming full moon. Peace, guys.